everyone, uh, depending on where you're connecting from. Welcome to the Citrix Ready Technical Webinar Series, uh, where we showcase how Citrix and our partners, like Lakeside Software, have integrated to deliver valuable products and solutions to common problems faced by our customers. I'm Anil Kumar, your host today, and I'm part of the Citrix Ready Technical Marketing Team, uh, managing the network ecosystem. Uh, we have Lakeside Software with us today, uh, regardless of whether you're already running the latest version of 7.6 Citrix uh, or if you're thinking about migrating or upgrading. I guarantee this webinar is packed with invaluable practices across the entire life cycle of Citrix implementation. Along with me today I have our main speaker Florian Becker, Senior Director of Strategic Alliances at Lakeside Software. Uh, Florian is a highly experienced software executive with a primary focus on end-user computing and virtualization. Uh, prior to Lakeside Software, uh, Florian led the worldwide consulting solutions practice with us at Citrix for many years, uh, where he introduced the Citrix desktop transformation methodology and service offerings. Since 2013, Florian has been leading Lakeside Software's strategic alliances uh, with the focus on Citrix. NVIDIA, Microsoft, and other key partners. All right, moving on. Uh, uh, Florian, if you could... Uh, uh, thank you. All right, so to introduce Citrix Ready, uh, Citrix Ready is an end-to-end -end technology partner program that showcases and recommends third-party products solutions and services that demonstrate compatibility with Citrix products. Customers can quickly and easily find solutions recommended by Citrix uh, in the Citrix Ready Marketplace hosted at uh, citrix.com forward slash ready. Uh, if you're interest, interested to learn more about our uh, Citrix Ready program, you could navigate to the partner programs at uh, citrix.com which is uh, hosted at the below, uh, below site. All right, so uh, we all know Zen App 5 and Zen Desktop 5 has already reached uh, end of life. Uh, Zen App 6 and 6.x would be reaching end of life uh, in the mid of 2016. Uh, with that said, it becomes very important for customers uh, to start planning on migrating your existing uh, Zen App and Zen Desktop infrastructure to the latest version, which is uh, Zen App and Zen Desktop 7.6. And boy, uh, does it require a lot of planning and preparation. So uh, Lakeside Software's uh, SysTrack is the big data for end users computing for a computing solution for Zen App and Zen Desktop implementations. Uh, from assessment of existing traditional Citrix environments uh, to transformation or migration to Zen App and Zen Desktop 7.6, SysTrack offers advanced analytics and insights to IT and the business. Uh, SysTrack also has tight integration with our uh, Citrix Director, AppDNA, HDX3D Pro Graphics, and GPU Monitoring and Sizing. Uh, we are very proud to have uh, Lakeside Software as our premier partner of the Citrix Ready program. Uh, so without any further ado, let me hand it over to Florian. Uh, just one housekeeping item to keep in, keep in your mind. Uh, if you have any questions during the webinar, uh, please use the questions panel available at the right side, right hand side, and uh, we will address them during our question and answers session at the end. All right. So please welcome our main speaker, Florian Becker, Senior Director of Strategic Alliances at uh, Lakeside Software. Hi, Florian. I uh, welcome you to this uh, technical webinar series, and uh, it, it's all yours. Thank you, Anil. Thank you very much for having me today. We're certainly glad to be back. I noticed a little bit of screen delay on the uh, on the GoToWebinar, so I try to advance the slides um, slowly for you. And so what we have today, we have a lot of great information for you. This time, I try to pack this up really as like top five factors impacting the user experience. So we obviously talk to uh, our customers and our partners all the time, uh, and we have a lot of customers with Citrix, uh, as we learned today, this is actually one of our major routes to market uh, in this segment, and these are just things that we learned, basically, and that we're trying to address. So the first one is, uh, and this is an important one, is basically customers tell us, we don't really know what is exactly happening inside the session host or the virtual desktop image. As a matter of fact, 
when you look at uh, traditional data center monitoring uh, solutions, there's a lot of things around the infrastructure and the networks and the servers and the load balances and, and all that is tremendously important. But once you look at the workload inside of your ZenApp uh, servers or your VDI images, it becomes really difficult to gain insights in there. So this is one of the major things that we are addressing and this is a, a perfect complementary extension to what Citrix is already doing with the director uh, and the edge side versions uh, that are available now in the 7.x products from Citrix. Um, the other thing that we are hearing is uh, we almost have too much information in our monitoring tools. So this is kind of this, this death by data, right? So you have all these different metrics and all this different data coming up and it's very difficult for organizations to distill it down to the things that actually matter that are actionable. So we're doing a lot of that and we'll be showing you a, a number of really neat and nifty tools here in that area as well. The third one here on the list is probably one of the most important ones and that is the environment overall is not sized according to what users need. Um, that's kind of the first step. And then the second part is that the user needs are actually constantly changing. So as, as IT uh, administrators, directors, architects, consultants, we constantly, constantly struggle with that. And as Anil said in the introduction, I have a long history with the Citrix Consulting Services Organization and that is actually one that, that was kind of an ongoing thing. So it's really important to have insights into these things as you're planning a migration and a change or a new adoption of Citrix technologies, but then also, and almost more importantly, keep looking at these things because changes are happening basically on a daily basis. Um, the next one is almost a corollary to that and that basically says that oftentimes software licenses out in the environment go unused while hardware budgets are hard to come by and in some organizations it's actually the other way around, right? So there's, there's plenty of hardware, plenty of infrastructure, but then maybe some of the software packages that people are, are uh, using or should be using are, are more difficult to justify internally. So getting the sizing right and getting the right balance between software and hardware in those systems overall is really, really important. And then the last one, and this is, I'm really excited to tell you about that, so I'll leave it for the very, very end uh, for you to stick with me here, is answering this question and basically customers are telling me like, well, I know what I'm doing here in my environment, I'm looking at the metrics, I, am, I know what my problems are, but it would be really good to know what other organizations that are just like me, what are they experiencing? And I'm like kind of, am I the only one out here or is there an actually a, a community of people that are seeing some of the same challenges and how do I compare and contrast and how do I engage with those guys? So these are the, the, the five things that we're gonna be talking today. And before we jump into the real meat of things, quick introduction about us in case you haven't heard about us. So uh, as Anil said, we label ourselves as, as probably leading uh, uh, vendor number one in big data for end user computing and end user analytics. And that is a topic that is gaining more and more traction. As a matter of fact, Gartner has put out a number of really interesting reports and I have the links for you at the end of the webinar. Uh, that talk about end user analytics and the importance of that in today's world. But we actually go back way before big data was even a word. Uh, back in the late 1990s, uh, we started uh, becoming an actual entity. And the first, one of the first releases that we did was the um, Citrix uh, resource manager service uh, that was packaged up with uh, MetaFrame presentation server for a couple of years. It was kind of embedded in that. And that's basically where, where we started our journey. We obviously have built big alliances with Citrix and services and the channel with systems integrators and that has led to well over 2,000 customer organizations with several million seats deployed today. Now how, do, how are we actually doing this? So one of the key things to understand around SysTrack today it's all about smart data collection and what I mean by that is, is first of all it is agent based right so we want to capture a lot of data and there are some technologies out there that try to do remote WMI calls and other different protocols um, and the problem with those things is at scale, they become very difficult uh, to do on the network and in the infrastructure. So we believe that you have to have a very lightweight and secure agent out there. I'll talk about this a little bit more in a second. Um, and that's basically builds the basis of what we do. Now that allows us to collect up to 10,000 discrete data points every 15 seconds. So a very, very high degree of granularity um, with statistical summaries uh, that kind of bring these things up and, and boil that data volume down to a more manageable tone. But sometimes you need that level of detail and then having it at that short time intervals is really, really important. So 
the agent itself, once it collects all the data, um, it is smart in the sense that it only really sends a summary of that to a central database. We call it a master server. And just to give you an idea, that is right around 100 kilobytes of data per day per system for a typical end user system in the case of a Citrix server, a, a Zenapp server, that's three, four, five hundred kilobytes per data per day. It depends a little bit on the uh, on the user density that uh, that you're driving there, but very, very economical on the network and in the infrastructure. And then we actually have a tree structure for global deployments, and I have an additional slide on that here uh, in just a second. And that's basically how it looks like. So I'll give you a second for the screen to refresh, but the idea here is that these master servers that we're driving, you can see three of them here on the screen right now, are basically a Windows server with a SQL server backend basically. And what we call the child systems, the local systems basically where our agent live, these can be servers, endpoints, uh, physical desktops, virtual desktops, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they basically communicate with that master server. And these are um, in and of themselves fairly uh, scalable, several thousand systems easily on a, on a single server. Uh, 10, 15,000 systems is typically what you're looking at. And when you go much beyond that, you start to get into um, a communication uh, and, and, and connection management bottlenecks. It's just the nature of, of how TCP communication works. And so we have, we have built a situation where these master servers can actually talk to each other and you can build this tree-like architecture where the master server then pumps its summary to the next higher level and to the next higher level until you reach a global master server at the very top, basically. And that really brings us to the scalability of the system. We have um, a customer out there that actually has well over 300,000 concurrently monitored systems. Uh, they're doing this with a number of these regional master servers that then kind of build up into a global uh, master server where all the information that's relevant basically comes up. And if you think about that uh, in aggregate, that's about um, a 10 million data points that actually get stored per second and about 100 million data points that actually get collected uh, across this environment. So all this very, very important to everything that we do um, because it really builds the foundations to the analytics and to the applications that we have on top of our database. So real quick, you see it on the bottom right, the agent itself is very, very lightweight. It's on average less than a half a percent of a single CPU core, um, and it is deployed in a way that it is not visible to the end users. Um, it doesn't contain any kernel components whatsoever because those sometimes carry the risk of causing things like blue screen errors and all this. So if you go, in other words, if you go too deep in the operating system, you're actually running the risk of destabilizing the whole thing, and that's obviously something that we want to avoid. Um, all right, and then as, I, as I've said, kind of in the center stands this database, and then we've built a number of tools on top of this, and those are the ones that we will actually be, uh, be looking at today. So regardless of the specific language that you're using in your methodology, it typically starts with an assessment, and then it goes to the implementation, which includes your detailed design and the, the pilots and the proof of concept deployments, um, and then you want to get in basically into the goal life and into the ongoing management of that. So if you think about this, right, if you kind of look at this, circle in the center on the top there um, with the assessment all the way through the implementation. That is basically what the industry refers to as the time to value. So you as a customer, if you decide to deploy a technology or deploy an application, you probably talk to your vendors for a while and you make your vendor selection and your selection criteria, which takes time. And then after that, you actually spend even more time kind of implementing everything. And you want to be as successful as you can with the technology. So it's really critical that we're doing the right things here and working with our partners and system integrators to help you get started on the right foot. But that's basically that time to value all the way from the beginning of the assessment all the way to the goal life. And that's something that we try to minimize uh, for you. So. Having said this, we're going to change gears here real quick, and I'm going to start showing you a live system. Um, and I'm just going to walk you through kind of the insights into the actual session host and into the actual uh, systems that are out there. So what I'm starting with is our high, highest level view, which we call the enterprise visualizer. On the top left there, you see some stats about our users. This is a relatively small internal kind of uh, demo and test environment, 137 total users, peak concurrency right on 50. Service quality, 89 and change. So service quality for us, what that means is we look at 
every factor that can basically impact the user experience, all the bottlenecks on a system. And we measure the time. Because we grab the data every 15 seconds, we can actually measure the time. Uh, and basically, this number is to be interpreted that 89% of the time in aggregate across the environment, there are no major bottlenecks that users are experiencing. And the, the flip side of that is obviously that in 10% of the cases, they actually do. And then we'll break this down into excellent, good, fair, and poor. So um, there's certain percentages associated with that. So an excellent user experience is one where the system is running without bottlenecks for 97% of the time or better. And then good is from 90 to 97, fair is from 80 to 90, and then poor is what we consider anything below 80%. And then you obviously want to uh, trend this information as well. So we, we can trend in general up to three years worth of data and you definitely want to see that number go up and to the right when you're talking about an excellent user experience. So this is really good for you to kind of compare a before and after if you're deploying a new application or making an architectural change or, or you know, doing any of the things that you're doing on a regular basis in your environment. Real quick, user concurrency on the right-hand side in aggregate over typical week, you see a number of screen locked systems and disconnected users or unused systems that might present an opportunity to streamline your environment a little bit. And then in the center left here around the software packages, it's basically the same story. The number of packages, how are they delivered, you know, how many packages are actually installed but get, never get used. So that might present an opportunity to recover some of that software cost that we talked about in some of the, uh, one of the initial slides. A lot of useful information here on this first dashboard, but now it's actually time to drill in. So I, I clicked on the word poor here from my user experience point of view. And what I'm presented with is, is one of our um, observation data sets. And one thing to point out here is in the SysTrack tool, you can group and manage your systems any which way that you like. You see here there's groups for Zen Desktop, for Zen App Servers, for general or virtual desktops by location and by a number of other things. So you can set this up in any which way that actually makes sense for your organization. And what I'm going to do is actually change my perspective of this data. I'm going to select here something that is called total productivity impact full details. Hey, that sounds great, full details. So we'll click on that and we'll see the view a little bit differently. So in aggregate here, we see on the horizontal axis the number of hours per week that systems in aggregate are resource constrained. And then we have it color coded so we actually see where the problems lie. So if you look at the legend here, it might be a little uh, slow on your, a little small on your screen, but you have CPU limited is the blue stuff, uh, storage and disk limitations are denoted in red, and then you have network, latency, system events, software updates, all these kind of different things. So. Um, this is really good from an IT manager's perspective to get that high-level overview and then figure out where do I actually need to um, uh, allocate my resources, where do I need to uh, spend time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select my Zen App Server group and I'm going to right-click on this and launch my site visualizer. The site visualizer that we have in the tool is very, very similar to the enterprise visualizer with the only exception that is now giving me the individual systems and servers that are contained within that group. And then again, I break this down by color and I can then therefore look at you know my better performing servers compared to my others and I can look into a little bit more detail on what's going on there. And I will be doing that in just a second. One of the things that I wanted to point out is I, if I go over to the data sets here to the right, there's a ton of stuff that speaks to the case that I started to make in the beginning, like really look inside your session host, not only look at the, the, the actual sessions and the stats around, but really look at what's going on on the, on the inside. So for example, if I click on my applications here and refresh that, I see all the different applications that are running uh, in this group of servers, which are my Zen app servers again. And uh, I, I see different stats here, right? So I see CPU and memory and IOPS and all this. And one thing that I should point out in the SysTrack tool, when you look at CPU specifically, we measure things in what's called MIPS or millions of instructions per second. And the reason why we do that is because we can obviously have different processor architecture across all the different systems in our groups and we need to be able to compare apples to apples. So the percent value that you see next to the MIPS value here in the CPU column is basically an equivalent percent 
percentage utilization on, on a mid-range desktop uh, processor like a Core i5 processor out of the Intel family, for example. So again, I can look at here and say like if I have a storage problem, if my storage systems tell me, you know, I'm overloading the system, I can, for example, just very quickly here sort this whole business by IOPS and I can then see which ones are the applications that are driving the highest storage demand on my system. It's very easy to look at this and there's a number of other reports around that as well. Another thing that I wanted to point out real quick is um, applications aggregation, right? So if I have, like in this case, 12 different versions of the same application out there, maybe it's time for me to consolidate this. Uh, this one happened to be a cloud application, but if there's other on-premise deployed applications that you have, and especially if you're moving from your existing environment over to Zenapp 7.6, for example, that presents a prime opportunity to aggregate and consolidate your, your applications and really look at what you need to deploy and what's actually getting used and those types of things. Um, same from a GPU perspective, that's interesting, right? So we see all the different applications that actually use protocols that are related to GPUs, either via DirectX or OpenGL or sometimes both. Um, so it's really interesting as these new technologies come on board from NVIDIA and Intel and some of the other vendors out there, uh, we know that a lot of customers are thinking about including that in their, um, in their deployment as well. So looking back at the user experience, which was a topic of this uh, webinar today, one thing I want to look at is my application faults, right? Which ones are the applications that are actually crashing? I see all the different executables, I see the version number, I see the specific sub-module or DLL, including the memory address basically. And then I can look and see, okay, how many times has this particular error occurred and which ones are the affected systems? And whenever you see in the SysTrack tool a blue dot here in a column header, it actually allows you to drill in. So if I want to look at the details of this particular error, I will be able to see the servers on which this error actually occurred. Um, this it seemed to be taking just a second here on your screen to uh, uh, to refresh here, so I'm just going to stay for that uh, for a second. But it, again, it allows you then to drill in and say, like, maybe I need to look at these specific servers, or if it's something that's really ubiquitous across the environment, maybe I need to work with my application vendors to um, to get these things uh, resolved. Same thing around um, people. So let's look at the people data set real quick. Um, because there we have all of our wonderful employees basically that are accessing, uh, in this case, the ZenApp environment. We know exactly how long they're uh, logged in per week out there. Basically, we know what their footprint is from a CPU and memory perspective. And if somebody uh, or a group of users are really, really intensive, we might want to shift them over to a portion of the infrastructure that is actually more capable uh, and provides basically a premium uh, uh, a premium amount of resources to ensure the user experience. So lots and lots and lots of really good stuff in here. What I want to go back real quick is the health discussion because it's where we started with. This is kind of our way of talking about the user experience. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this, this big server out here that seems to have the most issues out here. Out of the list, I'm going to right click. I'm going to launch my Resolve tool. And Resolve is interesting because what's happening now is on the web is that actually um, the SysTrack master server now actually makes a direct connection to the agent that is running on that system and that allows us to get really down to this very, very granular 15 second data if we want to. So the first screen that you see here is just a couple of uh, errors and warnings and flags that are, that are shown up. And because this is a Citrix server, I'm actually going to, uh, going to uh, take one step back and I'm going to change my focus and I'm actually going to look at the graph here which is showing you the CPU utilization, we're, seeing, we're showing you with a little X's the application focus changes and we're showing you with a little colorful items here the different uh, yellow and red uh, application errors and warnings and other things that we have configured so you can see exactly what is happening at what point in time inside that server. So if a user calls up or a group of users call up and say they have a problem with the environment that you can actually pinpoint when this might have started and when the user has experienced a particular issue. So you can basically go back and, and turn back the clock on all these things without having to reproduce the particular issue. So for any moment in time here, when we look at the bottom of the screen real quick, we see a lot of the system counters, we see the applications, including the ones that are highlighted in yellow, which are the ones that have uh, uh, a user focus at that particular moment in time. And then I have a number of other um, sets as well. So I can look at 
my um, sessions, for example, here. So if I pull that up, um, I see all the different Citrix and ICA sessions there um, that are coming up. It looks like that, that is a little bit slow for you to refresh on the go to webinar. So I'm trying to slow myself down. But lots and lots of really um, of really good information here that you can see um, the session stats, um, again, the applications, the network stacks, the network connections, and a lot of different things here in a very, very granular way. Another thing that I wanted to show real quick is around um, system dependency. So this is uh, worthwhile to wait for on the GoToMeeting for the screen to, uh, to refresh here. Uh, because the idea here is that we're looking at the system that is shown in yellow in the center. This is our Citrix server, and that's actually why I selected myself as an individual user, because now I can see on the top here the different um, sessions that I've established to that server. You see on the top right here is actually the active uh, ICS session that I'm using right now to, this, to do this demo. I have about 60 millisecond uh, latency. I'm about 1,000 miles or roughly 1,700 kilometers away from the data center physically, so that's certainly something that is well within the bounds of the expected. I see to the left of my server my disk and storage subsystems along with a latency to access those. That's important for the user experience. We have on the network side um, two default gateways with the latencies to those. So whenever you see latency to a default gateway creep up, that's a surefire way to say there's something wrong with the network, possibly even within the data center. And then on the bottom, and this gets more, um, more important, these are the applications that we've been using, right, along the executables, along with their startup times. And then, really important, the back-end network connection that these guys are using. So if a, if a user calls in and they say, like, I have an application problem with a particular executable, and that uh, application needs to talk to a, a, a network backend, the problem might be lying there, right? So it's really easy in this view to get in and look at these different dependencies and correlate this, and you can go over a larger time period uh, to see more aggregate information there, but a lot of, of really, really, really good stuff. Okay, I'm going to take a breath here for just a second and shift gears a little bit because I wanted to talk about um, really being able to distill the information that is out of this whole tool that is important to the use case. So one of the things that we have done here, I'm just going to go over here to a, a different browser tab, is the concept of dashboards. So um, we shipped the product with many, many different reports and dashboards and things like that, but we have found that both um, our customers as well as our partners and our system engineers and everybody out there always has a great idea for another way to visualize the data. So we put this dashboard builder together that you can actually build your own custom dashboards and put whatever data you like on them. And we also build them and ship them and put them out there. So the one that we're looking at right now is around Zen App Sessions. So at first we see in the group the different servers that we have in this environment. We see the session count. We see the number of unique users at this over the last 30 days or so on the top. And then as I scroll down, we have uh, an important point here around machine failures. So I can actually click on the data point here if I want to. Um, and then I see the machine failures. And then you see on the bottom uh, uh, in the textual description, you see the different uh, failures, start date, end date, and then also the error. And in this case, these are just machines that fail to register with the um, with a Citrix uh, director and with a with a session broker, basically. Now, the reason why I brought this particular dashboard up because it shows the power of data aggregation. Because some of the information here is coming out of the SysTrack database from us, and some of it is actually a direct database level connection to Citrix director. So there's a number of really good things that Citrix exposes in the director architecture, and we can actually tap into this. So it's very easy to do this on a single dashboard and grab some information from director, some information from SysTrack, maybe some information from some other data-driven tools that you have out there, and really being able to visualize those in a single pane of glass. So as I scroll down here, um, we have more information on this particular dashboard. We have uh, session stats, uh, average memory, active memory, uh, CPU consumption again, how many session in aggregate, how many unique users. Um, if I select a server, which I've done here with the one that we looked at, what were the application faults during the time frame that I selected uh, on that server that might, might have impacted um, might have impacted the user experience, and what does the user concurrency actually look like on that particular server? 
So um, as I scroll down, I see a little bit more information. So now I get really detailed. Now I get to the down to the user level. So what I have here in my drop down list is actually a list of all the different um, users that have basically accessed this particular server um, over the last 30 days. That's the time frame that I selected. Um, again, I selected myself. I have all my different sessions in here, and I have the first one selected here that came up on the list that actually um, started December 3rd. And then on the bottom, I see all the different alarms that this particular server raised during the time of that session, uh, because that might be really important, right? And, and we look at a number of different things here. We look at, you see there's a printer auto creation failure. Um, there's a number of other things that are, that are typical in these multi-user uh, terminal server uh, type of environment. So it's very important for somebody to be able to see that really, really deep inside into the, um, into the server as it is. Okay, so this is one aspect of um, a Citrix-related dashboard. Let me actually pull up the, um, the main page here and look at some of the, my favorites that I have. Um, one thing that, that's important is around licensing. We talked about this a little bit on um, uh, what that means from a, from a customer perspective. So I'm just going to pull up uh, this particular one, application license gauges. I actually built this for, uh, for a customer not too long ago that wanted to build a, uh, an application store based on Citrix ZenAppens and desktop. And I said, we want to put all the applications out there, but we need to measure how many users do we actually have on that. So we just put this together, Visual Studio, Visio, Adobe, Office Professional, a number of other things. So very simple for us to see over a time period how many unique users actually access those applications. And I can, again, tie those dials actually into maybe another database where I actually keep track of how many licenses do I actually own in my organizations and what's my consumption uh, and put that together. And we have a number of customers that actually use this type of stuff for auditing purposes as well. So that's about application licenses. The next thing that I wanted to show you um, is around Citrix licensing because um, that becomes really important when you go into the 7.x platform. Uh, and we developed this, and we actually wrote a blog about this as well, which is quite popular. But we developed this actually in conjunction with Citrix. And this is the decision on, is it better for me to actually stay with concurrent user licensing, or is it actually beneficial to go to the user slash device licensing? So on the left here, what you see is we just basically show you the numbers, right? So we say, uh, the highest concurrency that we've seen in this particular case was 24 on the ZenApp environment. And we know, and I'll talk about this in a second, how to compute the user and device licensing. And we would have seen 57 of those licenses consumed. And if you look at the price point, which is roughly two to one, it's actually in this particular example would have actually been cheaper for us to stay with concurrent user licensing and in some other instances, it's obviously better to go to the user slash device licensing. But now you can basically make a decision based on the actual data. And the way it works is we need to look at all the unique devices um, that people use to access the environment. We need to look at all the individual users that are accessing the environment. And then we need to figure out, are there any devices that are basically used by more than one user? And we list those out. We only have a few here, like with two to four users each. Um, and then we also we need to look at the particular users that are only accessing the environment from a shared device because these four factors taken together will actually drive how the Citrix licensing mechanism looks at um, uh, computing the user slash device licensing. So very, very simple from our perspective to run this on an existing ZenApp environment and then collect the data and basically look at this dashboard to see um, what we need to what we need to do from a licensing perspective and where the where the sweet spot is based on what we're actually using. Okay, last one of these dashboards that I want to show is uh, really more around security. And this was also a use case that uh, a customer brought to us a while ago. And they basically said, well, you know, you're doing a great job collecting all the different executables that are out there and that's all great. but." I'm really interested in seeing what are the brand new processes that are brand new to the entire estate, let's say in the last 24 hours, and how many systems are they running on, and what are those systems, et cetera, et cetera. So we built this dashboard. Really took the better part of 10 minutes to put this together. Very, very exciting. So we see a lot of 
antivirus uh, patches here, obviously that is expected. You have different browser updates and, and all these other things. So you can, you can filter these things too. But the important part is these are all executables that we haven't seen up to now, just in the last 24 hours. And now I can actually look at those. I can look at the different systems where these things came up. I can figure out if that's an authorized view or not. And I can see whether or not that uh, poses a potential security or compliance risk for me. And I can dig deeper from that. So very interesting here from a dashboard perspective. Just to kind of show this to you very, very briefly, if I actually go into the dashboard editor, this is a very nice, uh, nicely used HTML5 type of user interface where you can basically drag and drop the different components and then your queries and your grids and your, your timers and all this. And as, as I said, we are actually building a lot of those dashboards and we're making them available for download as well. Okay, I wanted to show you one last aspect of reporting because the other thing that we're doing is we're integrating with SQL Server reporting services. Again, we're using a SQL Server backend, so it's very easy for us to do. And what we have done here, you see this folder on the top left that says Citrix Session Reporting. That's actually a whole kit of reports that you can download from us. And what we have done here is we try to mimic the legacy edge side reports because we hear from customers over and over again that um, uh, Zenapp 7.x is awesome, but they are uh, really liking the older legacy versions of the Edge Site product, basically, with all the reports in this. So we had a look at those. We recreated a lot of those reports pretty much one-to-one -one from the Edge portfolio, and we make them available under the Citrix Session Reporting Kit. And in this case, we have uh, application network volume, right? So we're interested in how much data is my application actually putting on the, vi on the wire, what's the total volume, how many kilobytes and megabytes sent and received and all those things. So all the different things that you're used to from an edge side perspective are basically right there. Okay, so having said this, I will actually take you back for a second to the PowerPoints um, because I wanted to show you one more thing that is actually from a customer environment that I cannot show you right now. Uh, give me just one second to get back here and start the presentation from the right slide. I had a number of backup slides in here in case the demo wasn't working. Okay, this is now one that is a use case of Zenapp specifically with the NVIDIA grid architecture. And this was a customer who was using that and they basically said, okay, let's look at my deployment as I have it and I basically want to see the high water marks. I want to see how am I doing in the sizing of this environment. So you have all the servers there, I had to kind of gray those out and then you look at again a seven day time period in this particular example, maximum CPU percentage, memory, GPU percentage, right? So we have the NVIDIA APIs built in so we can actually talk to that card directly and see both the compute as well as the memory side, how many applications that are consuming GPUs are, are running there at the, at the maximum, what about my storage subsystems, IOPS, disk queues, disk percent time, those types of different things and then obviously what, what are the session counts. So very, very simple but very powerful and as I click through this, I have a graph basically of the uh, session counts over time basically so I see that maximum and active sessions. I see um, CPU and I'm going to click through this relatively quickly so I know that the go to webinar is a little bit lagging but CPU, memory and then the GPU metrics. I'm going to stop here for a second because one thing that you will notice is that you have a lot of spikes in the GPU and that is that is expected, right? So people do, in this case, they actually use engineering type of applications and they rotate, uh, let's say, a 3D model. That's when the GPU gets really, really busy and then once a user is done doing that, the GPU basically doesn't have all that much stuff to do. So you expect a lot of spikes there. But the important part here is that this is actually very well sized from a GPU perspective because you never really get above 75, 76% there, more towards, uh, more towards the left there. So very healthy environment and that really helps that organizations as they're actually increasing the use of their Zenapp deployment for these use cases gives them a really good real-time, real live metric on how the servers should be sized given the application portfolio um, that they have. So um, let me actually go through this relatively quickly and go to the end. Um, we talked about the licensing and I just have a couple of screenshots there. And I will now want to spend a few minutes with you 
on what we call the SysTrack community, right? So when we started this webinar, we talked about that customers really want to know what some of the other customers are doing out there. How am I doing? Uh, you know, are some of the problems that I'm seeing, are they similar to what other people are experiencing? Very, very powerful. So I put this quote out there. Um, somebody said, like, I didn't even know I could do this. And then I, I learned about the Lakeside community. So um, this is something that we soft launched a couple of months ago. We actually won an award from the Tech Target guys, uh, from the Brian Madden crew on that uh, a couple of months ago. But now we're really launching this in earnest. But here, here are the common questions, right? So I understand my data uh, related to end-to-end -end, uh, end user computing health, but how are other comparable companies doing? I see my app portfolio usage. We're often seeing a lot of applications that get installed that get never used, but what's a good ratio there? What's a good number? What's a bad number? What are other organizations actually using? Um, application falls are really, really big. This is the difficult stuff where you can actually pull your hair out trying to figure out what's going on. So it's really important to see, am I the only one seeing this or are there other organizations that are potentially seeing the exact same fault with the exact same application because if so, then it's easier to talk to the vendor, it's easier to get kind of the community of people together and try to discuss solutions around this uh, and really are more confident that solutions already exist out there. Uh, boot and login time, great topic, right? As, as Citrix administrators, I think all of us have been beat up over the head uh, for this a couple of times. Um, so boot and login times, are they long? Are they just in the perception long? Are they longer than anybody else's? Are they really, really bad compared to anybody else's? Really important to actually look at that at some point. And then, um, you know, system landscape uh, and in the organization, configurations, the age of my systems, what type of servers am I deploying? What type of endpoints am I deploying? Um, and how does that compare to everybody else? Because if we're really honest, right, if we look in the mirror, sometimes we want to be top notch. We want to be up there and run the best possible environment, the best possible user experience that we can. So real quick at a glance, the way this works is from within the Lakeside uh, SysTrack deployment tool, which is our central configuration tool, you can actually opt into this, this program. And what happens then is that, it, that there's a subset of highly anonymized summary data from your system, basically, that then gets uploaded into a, uh, into a, a central database that we own, that we operate, basically. Um, and once you do that, you're prompted with a logon screen, like there's a couple of chip boxes to check. Uh, you can select your industry vertical. You can select a few other pieces of metadata that helps us select the best comparison group to you. And then you can obtain these reports basically from some of the other uh, uh, participants. And, and these are reports that we just basically uh, have launched the first iteration of that. And that is something that we really look a lot of feedback from you guys. Uh, and from from customers in general, because the the, the opportunities are endless to re report and produce really great comparative analytic data uh, between other things. So, one of the things that I put up here on the screen is around health trends, right? So we talked about user experience, which is health, right? So, um, I myself I sit in the Lakeside Software Florida office. And I basically use that as kind of a, a community uh, uploader there. And I'm basically comparing trends over uh, compared to all the other organizations and how that maps over time. And what we see here, we didn't have November data yet, but we see we were in August, we were actually worse than everybody else. Then in September, we were almost on par. And in October, we actually uh, managed to drive an overall aggregate user experience that was actually better than industry average. And that might be a very powerful tool tool for you to uh, talk to your leadership and your organizations as well. The next sample that I have is around um, application fault, as I said. So, so this is, again, Lakeside Software Florida, a couple of applications out here. The first one, specific version, specific DLL. I had 35 faults on this on a single system. So something is definitely going on here. But then I see there's no other organizations in the community at this point in time that actually had that executable or that even had that fault, obviously, right? So it looks like with this one, I'm kind of on my own there to try to figure this out. But if you look at the bottom of the screenshot, you see the um, this executable. I had three faults with this on a single system. Now I see that 40% of other community organizations um, actually use the same application. I'm not going to beat up on, on the vendor there, but many of you know uh, what that is or who that is. And then all of them, the, the entire subset basically, the entire 40% that have the organization actually see 
um, not only a fault with it, but they actually see the exact same fault, right, on the exact same uh, version number out there. So this is now an example where I can basically go back and see, like, do I need to go back to the vendor to update this particular um, this particular executable or uh, or try to work this out on my own? Okay, real quick before we go to the Q and answer, I mentioned this in the beginning. Gartner research on end user analytics. Uh, there's a paper out there making the right choice for end-user compute, uh, computing investments over the next five years. We believe that is very, very much spot on with uh, the message that we want to say, uh, that we want to deliver. And there's also the end-user computing market clock. Um, then we have the community award that I talked about. This was at the VMworld conference 2015. There's a video interview out there uh, in the blog on the Brian Madden site that you can look at. Um, and then last but not least, I put up the white papers and solution briefs. So um, we have a lot of topics around Zen app migrations. We did a solution brief with Citrix around the workspace suite, around AppDNA and Windows 10 specifically. And all those are basically posted on the Citrix Ready marketplace. You don't have to write down these lengthy uh, URLs here. Next steps for you. If you are interested, contact us uh, on the website, read our blogs, uh, shoot us an email, salesinfo at lakesidesoftware.com. That's a very fast way to get in touch with us and get mapped to the right account managers on our side. And if you want to stay in touch with me directly, um, I'm on Twitter, Florian Becker, or you can just obviously email me directly, florian.becker at lakesidesoftware.com. With that, Anil, I put it back to you. Do we have any questions uh, in the queue that we might want to talk about? Uh, Florian Def, but before that, th thanks very much for this uh, wonderful presentation, and I'm glad uh, the demo worked out really well. Uh, and and I'm very impressed with the uh, 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 with the Lakeside uh, sys track. I mean, I mean, great dashboard view with with, uh, with a lot of concurrent concurrent users, disconnected sessions at the start, and uh, the site view uh, visualizer where uh, where I can really. Uh, uh, they, they really uh, see they see a very granular view of different processes, running, storage, etc. And and uh, I, I really like the application license gauge and, and the license consumption view. Uh, that I, I think that's that's pretty uh, that's very helpful for for the Citrix administrators and and the companies who who want to decide between uh, concurrent and uh, user device licensing. All right. So, so we we did uh, we did get quite a quite a few questions. So let me uh, let me put them across to you. Uh, so, uh, so let so uh, to, uh, how how is this track uh, installed uh, in a in an existing Zenapos and desktop environment? Okay, uh, good, good. Okay, was the second part to the question? Uh, sorry about that. No, uh, go ahead. Okay, good. So let me uh, outline this real quick. So as I mentioned before, we're running on a. We have this concept of a master server, which is a Windows server, uh, typically today a 2012 R2, but it also runs on 2008, uh, I believe R2. Um, and then um, it also runs really, really well on a virtual server. So the first step is to set up a virtual server um, uh, with that relatively modest specs, to be honest, like four virtual CPUs is often enough to get started, uh, 56, uh, 50 gigs of hard drive sp uh, space, maybe eight gigs of RAM or so. And then our installer actually goes through and installs our software, it installs actually SQL Server Express Edition, uh, which you can use to get started. And then from there on, basically, once you have that up and running, which really only takes about an hour or two to set it up initially, um, we have the what we call the deployment tool, which does the internal configuration and can also help you deploy the agents. Um, you can use your own uh, MSI pusher a package, whatever technology you have, even if it's you know System Center or some of the other technologies out there where you can uh, do a scripted uh, command line install, for example, in golden images if you're using things like provisioning services, et cetera. So it's a single, oftentimes virtual server to get started. Um, SQL Server Express is perfectly fine. You can also hook it up to your existing SQL Server environment out there. Um, and as you, you know, if you download our software with the documentation, there's a lot of uh, additional stuff about the system requirements and the different limitations out there and the scalability breakpoints and all that. Uh, sounds good, Florian. And, and is there any uh, any dependency on the uh, operating system? Because uh, I'm, I'm sure there are customers who use uh, Linux endpoints or Windows 7 
uh, Windows yeah, 10. Yeah, so we, uh, you know, obviously, obviously the um, uh, 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 a lot of, all the Windows operating systems are supported right out of the box, basically, right? So we do a lot of work around Windows 7, Windows 10. We actually partner with Microsoft. We're one of the platinum launch partners for Microsoft Windows 10, and we've actually just completed a roadshow with these guys, of which Citrix was actually also a part of, which is very interesting. So uh, a lot of things, today we're obviously focused on the Zen apps and desktop use case, uh, but a lot of other use cases are, are very ubiquitous out there as well. So, sounds good. And uh, Florian, so, so most of our customers are already, uh, have started moving on to the latest version of Zen app, but, but uh, we still have customers with the older versions. Uh, so, so can can this track, uh, or is there any uh, dependency on the version, uh, or Zen app or Zen desktop version, uh, before I could go ahead and install uh, uh, install this track? There's actually this is a very interesting question. There's no practical limitation for that, and the reason is we started this product on MetaFrame, like all the way back, and we actually have supported every single version of Zen app, uh, both in the IMA architecture and then also in the FMA architecture and we are, we are certified from a Citrix Ready point of view there. Um, there are a number of uh, really interesting um, uh, visualizers and use cases uh, to basically help you plan as I said, right? So when you go from your legacy environment, you make that architectural change to the 7x versions, you definitely want to uncover your use cases, you want to avoid bringing in applications that, that are not performing well, you might want to onboard additional uh, users as well, and that's why, why a lot of our customers actually analyze the physical endpoints and the desktops in the estate as well to, to really pinpoint applications that would lend themselves better to um, uh, to running in this. So, so to answer your question, no, there's no limits on the versions of Zen App and Zen Desktop. Um, you can go back uh, fairly far in the stack, basically. Uh, most of our customers are somewhere in you know, Zen app 5.x and higher, and and on the Zen desktop side, actually, obviously, obviously in the same in the same realm. Sounds sounds good to me, uh, Florian. All right, so so one more question here. So uh, so uh, as you know, most of the customers uh, uh, are already using SaaS based applications like Salesforce or the Office 365, and and you and you showed. Uh, uh, one one dashboard where uh, where I where I can do uh, uh, where I can really see the number of licenses being consumed by the users. So so how does this track help me uh, with with SaaS applications uh, and Office 365? That that's a great question. So this is actually I could actually talk for a whole hour about this, but to make it quick is. Obviously, a lot of customers, a lot of organizations are adopting these, these SaaS applications. And what that means is IT still has to support them, right? So if, if I'm as an end user, if I have a challenge with a web-based uh, SaaS application or with Office 365 or with some clients that I download, um, I don't care if that's cloud-based or if IT is managing that or not. I will still call the IT help desk if I have a challenge with that. So what we actually see a lot and the industry overall, I think, agrees with that is that in this world where we believe the end user computing environments and the desktops and, this, and the, even the Citrix use cases, if they become more cloudy, right, so if we have more cloud-based applications, the only privileged vantage point from a support perspective and from an analytics perspective is the endpoint, right, and I use the word endpoint uh, uh, loosely, right, it can be the desktop, it can be the Citrix server and all this, because the only way that I can really see what is going on and proactively start to pinpoint, is it my client, is it my browser crashing, is it the network connection, is it the the, the intermediate layer or the back end, the only way that I can actually see this is if I is if I'm instrumenting uh, that VDI image, the desktop or the or the Citrix server, and while my my data center monitoring tools that I probably already have in place, right, they're great for that infrastructure. They probably work just as well, but they don't tell me anything about the performance of a SaaS application of Office 365 for those types of things. So we believe that um, uh, it is actually more and more important for organizations to adapt adopt end user analytics because it's really the only way to get through to these cloud applications and some of the analysts that I mentioned earlier actually agree with that as well. Excellent. All right, so, so we have uh, one more question coming in. Uh, so, uh, so can you associate application executables uh, with the layman labeled application name? 
Yes, yes, you can. I failed to show that in the interest of time because I was running through everything rather quickly. So we do two things to answer the question. We look at the executable, right? That's very easy for us. We also look at what we call the application package, right? And that's basically more the layman's term of the application that tells you if it's, you know, if it's your, let's say, office professional package or if it's, uh, uh, you know, any of the other things out there that you have, right? And, and what that allows us to do is actually some of these Software packages obviously have multiple executables and multiple things that all belong to that, that belong together. And we, yes, we can look at this and we can report in, in it in that particular fashion as well. We actually try to extract that information out of the system as we, um, as we collect the information. So in some of the reports, depending on what you want to look at, some people really like to look at the executable level. Those were the examples that I showed today but absolutely they're visualized for software packages as well to make it a little bit more readable and give more of a summary view as well. So that sounds excellent, uh, Florian. So, so one, uh, one last question before, uh, before we wrap, the, uh, wrap this up uh, in, the, in the interest of time, uh, but, but this is very important. So uh, with, with Zenap uh, 6 coming to end of life uh, probably uh, mid of next year, we have most of our customers uh, starting to migrate to Zenap uh, 7.6. So, how can SysTrack uh, play uh, play an important role in in, in the ad adoption and migration to uh, to our latest version? So, I think there's a couple of different things out there, right? So, the um, Citrix has done a great job with a migration tool that you can get online, right? So, what that does is allows you to load this up into your existing environment and then it basically spits out a configuration file that allows you then to import all your settings and your published applications and those types of things into the into the new form. So that, that's a very important first step. Now, what we bring to the table is all the underlying information behind that, right? So you may have, for example, you may have uh, Microsoft Outlook as a published application and then people use that and that's what they launch and that's what you see in the session information. But if there are email attachments and they click on those and they open those up, they might be opening any of the other Office applications that might be opening a, a PDF reader, for example, and other things. So these are what I call child applications, right? So you have like your major application that is the published one that you see in all the stats, but then within that, each session has a ton of other executables and things. And all these things belong together. So we are very good at uncovering this. We actually have a data center visualizer for that that focuses more on some of the server use cases that uncovers that. There's a ton of reports out there. We showed the licensing already between the concurrent and the user device licensing. So there are a number of different things um, that really augment what Citrix is already doing in terms of reference architectures and the migration tool to really help organizations architect that. And uh, we're doing another very, very exciting thing that we are uh, most likely announcing in January. We'll talk about it right now, but there's going to be some very specific things around ZenApp and ZenApp migration use cases as well. And just bear with us as we talk about that in the beginning of next year. Uh, uh, sounds good, Flori, and definitely look forward to it. Uh, we, we have some more questions coming in, but uh, we are unable to take them uh, right now. Uh, but but we'll definitely get back to you privately over your uh, registered email addresses. Uh, and I also see many attendees asking if, if the recording and uh, slides of this webinar would be available. Uh, to answer that question, yes, uh, we will share the recording with the uh, with all the attendees uh, within a day or two uh, on your registered registered email IDs. Uh, with that said, uh, we are about to end today's webinar. Uh, I want to take a moment again and thank uh, Florian for this fantastic presentation and demo and uh, sharing great insights with us. And uh, last but not least, I want to thank each and every one of you who have attended uh, today's webinar uh, in the Citrix City Technical Webinar Series. And uh, this shall conclude the broadcast. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much.